mighty and majestic is our God who sits enthroned above the heavens. Hi, my name is Nicole Foster and welcome to the new Exodus. Tonight we're talking about Numbers 21. And let me tell you something, if you have a weak faith or faint of heart, this is not the lesson for you. But if you have decided to set your face like a flint to worship God, no matter what, this is the lesson for you. Okay. Numbers 21 is about when the Hebrews have crossed the Sea of Reeds, they're going around Mount Hor, which is, and they're trying to go around Edom, which is south of present day Israel. Okay. It's in the desert south of it. And it borders what they call the Eastern Desert. So um, this is Saudi Arabia. Okay. They are going around trying to get to the promised land yet still. And um, they are complaining against Moses, but now in Numbers 21, they are complaining, not against Moses, just against Moses, but they are complaining against God himself, and God is not having it. They're complaining about the manna, they're complaining that, um, God, you've brought us all this way, um, <laughs> and now what? Um, but they are complaining against God, okay? Complaining against God, and God is not having it. So because of the complaints, God sends ven venomous snakes to bite them. And many of the Hebrews die because of this. Now Numbers, the book of Numbers is split. A lot of scholars agree it's split in two sections uh, between two census. And the first census is all of the people, um, well, not all of them, but many of the people are, are from Egypt. They actually had, came, they're the generation that came out of Egypt except Caleb and Joshua. Okay, the, the second census um, is, a, is a census of people that are on the cusp of crossing uh, into the promised land. So all the people that made it into the promised land were born in the wilderness. Everybody who came out of Egypt eventually dies. They never see the promised land, not even Moses. But... They are com right now at this point, they are complaining. God's not having it. He's sending poisonous snakes to bite them. And let me tell you about the snakes in this area. Okay. There's snakes called um, the puff adder, uh, the uh, carpet viper. Those are the snakes in this area. And they're biting people and they're dying. And God's like, that's what you get for complaining about, complaining against me. Okay. But. The people plead and pray and repent. And Moses intercedes on their behalf to the Lord. And the Lord tells Moses to make a bronze serpent and to set it up. And all those who have been bitten and look upon this bronze serpent, they will be healed. Okay. But the people of Israel, the Hebrews, they prayed that God would take the snakes away from them. And that was not God's answer. God's answer to them was, if you are bitten, you can look upon the serpent and be healed. I will provide the healing, but I'm not taking away uh, the things, the thing, the very thing that's troubling you. Okay. Um, when I read this, I was convicted. Um, how many times do I complain, <laughs> complain about what God is doing or what he's not doing or what I think he's not doing or what I think he is doing? How many times do we do that? Okay, how many times do we complain about the very thing that God probably sent as a, as a, a piercing in us to train us up, to set us on the path of righteousness, to look towards healing? Okay, God did not take away their suffering. This passage is a, is a reality check. I mean, this is life. God did not take away their suffering. He did not take away the thing that was a pain, giving them pain, that was causing them trouble. But he provided the healing. Okay? What can we get out of this? Um, life is full of trouble. Full of trouble. I'm sick of all this trouble. Many of you are sick of trouble. We all get sick of trouble. It's full of it. But God provides the healing. Okay? So remember that as you're going through trouble. Um... And ask the Holy Spirit to help you with your tongue and help you with your heart about your attitude towards your, your own creator and the situations that he's placed you in right now. And ask the Holy Spirit, and I, I, I'm speaking to myself, to help you to trust him in the midst of the pain, in the midst 
of the agony and the trouble because he has provided um, a place of healing for the very thing that pains you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. God bless you. Hold on. Keep the faith. Keep looking towards your help in the heavens. And we'll see you next time. God bless. Take care. Goodbye.